Flying over the Black Hills of South Dakota. The Lakota Native Americans gave the Black Hills their name. But from up here, it's a huge expanse of forest and jagged peaks as far as the eye can see. It's remote and it's wild. The pilot's going to bring me in about 15 foot above the summit. Then it's down to me. I landed in bright sunshine, but within minutes, I'm getting a taste of South Dakota's volatile weather. Just a spectacular landscape. And this whole area is notorious for lightning. That's electrical storms. I'm right here on the top of this pinnacle. Probably the worst place in B for lightning. And that's the thunder. My priority has got to be get down. I'm at the highest point for miles. And if I don't get off this rock, I'll become a human lightning conductor. This isn't looking very clever either. It's a leap to reach a branch, which bends, but holds. That's the last light. 15, 20 foot down. Let's see if I just wedge myself. When there's no more branches, all I can do is chimney my way down using the rock. Okay. But heading further down river is going to be tough going. The river's in pretty well full flood. You see all that brown water. But that makes it difficult to judge how deep this is. Jumping into unknown water is one of the most dangerous things you can do and should only ever be a last resort. <laughs> By wrapping everything tightly in my jacket, then putting it in my rucksack, I should be able to keep it dry for a minute or so at least. OK, moan of truth. so cold it takes my breath away. I've got to get to the shore fast. My gear won't stay dry for long and I want to be on my way quickly. And actually look, that's worked great. I've made it down in one piece and I'm ready for the next challenge. This is going to be great. Maybe around here. What I'm going to try and do is make myself Traditional Native American war camp. The Lakota survived in this environment for hundreds of years. But what I can use just to improvise that is my belt. Native Americans used to do is just weave it together. Building a watertight shelter here will take a long time, and I want to use the rest of the daylight to forage for some food. And yeah, it might not be much, but for tonight it's home. I want to go hunting, but first I need a weapon. Deer antler. Probably, probably a white tail though. Tell that from the way their antlers tend to curve and face forward. But actually, I know what I can use this for. Catapult. I made loads of these as a kid, but never out of antler. I just need some way of getting some elastic. I can use this stretchy cord from my rucksack and tie loops in it using a knot that will tighten on itself. With a little practice, a catapult is a very effective weapon. And that then now is ready. All I need is a bit of ammunition. I'm in the Black Hills, hunting with an improvised catapult. These hills are home to cottontails, jackrabbits and raccoons. I don't think I'll be able to kill an animal outright, but with a good shot, I might be able to stun it long enough to grab it. See that little chipmunk? I'm going to have to be quiet and stealthy so I don't spook my prey. Quite close. I move in to see if I can get another shot, but as I do, the cameraman spots a dangerous predator. Another step, and he could have been badly bitten. Okay. Yeah? Snake down here. Is there? Okay. It's a rattlesnake. And it's a big one. And that's his rattle going. It will make a great meal, but it's a dangerous target. He's pissed off now. 
Stand back. Cool. Well, I went out trying to get a bunny. Mr. Chipmunk failed with a catapult, but one with a stick. That's one rattlesnake. My heart is thumping. I'm so pleased to have got that. 15 minutes after I killed it, my dinner is still trying to escape. By weaving some green sticks together, I can make a griddle to cook it on. And to gut this, all you do, grab its skin and gently peel it back. And then this, you can see, all of that is good meat. And put it over the coals and just let that cook. The only thing I'm worried about is that if it really pours the rain, I've definitely made the wrong shelter. Don't rain. Looks like those prayers haven't been answered. I reckon I've probably got about is a losing battle. Best thing to do is get my coat on and huddle in. OK, guys, it's going to be a wet one. Snake, you're on hold. There's still thunder around, but the rain's eased. I'm going to take my chance and try a bit of this snake. Mm. Nice and warming after that soaking. They just warm your bones. I've spent the night in my war camp at the base of the Black Hills. The storm eased off overnight, but I was already soaking. As much as it pains me, I'm kind of finished with this camp now. I want to get my belt back. And those bison are coming straight this way. Okay, nice and steady. Once the stampede has subsided, I can get a little closer. But this is something you should never attempt. And look, you see, they heard quite well. They will move away from us. Bison are unpredictable. Even if they appear indifferent, they can turn on you in a second. Once they've gone past you, then you can relax a bit. Dead bison. Man, look at all the flies all over this. And this is this has been dead. Probably three, four days. But there is still part of this that probably still is edible. And this is it. The fat in the hump here. And the fat is always gonna take longer to decompose. Oh man, actually looking at that, all of that has started to go, man, that's no good. And I've made the mistake before of eating stuff that's bad and you pay the consequences and that isn't any good. I could use the hide and bones to make a shelter, but I'm on the move and the extra weight would just slow me up. But the wildlife isn't the only danger on the Great Plains. Dehydration is a constant threat. With very few rivers or streams, finding water out here can be a real challenge. You see all of that really lush vegetation around there. And that's a good indicator of water. OK, what I'm going to do is dig down into this. And at the moment, all of this looks pretty gunky and horrible. But once this fills up, if I let all that sediment sink, I should be left then with nice, clean water at the end of it. And what I can do is just scoop out all of this first bit of the water and not really drinkable. And then let that fill up again. And, and yeah, this is looking much, much clearer now. And look, fill this up, you'll see what I mean. Look at that. And that really is good to drink straight from this little well. <laughs> I'm heading to the place where the South Dakota prairie stops dead and the badlands begin. I know one person described this as an image of hell once the fires have burned out. 
what I know is that there's a road that runs from the north to south, the other side of the Badlands. And that's the way I want to head. And with a little help, I reckon I can beat the Badlands. Look, I actually use a bit of this dead juniper bush to make myself a bit of a ice axe. Juniper is a tough hardwood and one of the few plants that grows to any size down here. And that then is going to do as an axe to put in and pull on. Actually, this is working quite nicely. <laughs> Improvising. That's what surviving this place is all about. And it might not be the prettiest ice axes in the world, but at the moment, they're doing their job. This slope's deceptive, much steeper than it looked from below. I'm halfway up, and it's nearly vertical. This fossilised soil is giving way with every step. Sorry. Not quite as foolproof. I hoped. I was quite nearly there. One more guy, come on. A bad fall here might not kill you straight away, but get seriously injured and getting out could be almost impossible. Navigating the Badlands is hard, dehydrating work. It's a good bright night, and the going's definitely easier now. And that road has got to be close. The imma polimun kujin mar sadunguru nawa. If you're on your own and you're choking, what would you do? Would you? Two, three. Yep. Perfect. Three, five.